I think I just realized that my sound wasn't on the whole time. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. So let me start all over because I started talking and my mic wasn't even on. I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> um, let me try to recall what I was talking about. Um, well, I did say welcome to day six. And I think I said, um, yeah, embarking on a 100 day project like this is really important. And I do think that um, whether you're joining me live or watching the replay and doing your own 100 day project or following along with me, I think it's, um, I think it's an, it's an opportunity. It's a chance to discover new things, um, even push boundaries from, um, in which you are comfortable. Right. And so I think for me, my comfort, comfort pushing boundary was I was kind of stuck in a creative style you know and even on day two something unlocked in me and then it kind of opened the doors for something else and so I feel like projects like this um, is an opportunity for that so now that you can actually hear me <laughs> oh man okay not up to a great start but that's okay um, I also said earlier that I don't have much else to say this this evening except that you know why don't we just start our breathing exercise and go right into painting so if you are ready um, if you're ready yeah let me go ahead and start the music and we'll do our breathing exercise here we go Let me bring us back together. Oh. 
Okay, so this week I want to, for today's live and tomorrow's live, I kind of want to continue my Cherry Blossom series. Um, I think something when you, you know, like when we talk about mindfulness, um, I think what's really important is to focus on what is kind of inspiring you in that moment, you know? So if it's the same subject that you're painting, you know, 10 different ways, I think that's totally okay. Like if you think about, you know, artists like old masters, um, like Monet, just for example, because he's one of my favorites, but he painted the same subject multiple times, dozens of times. Yes, he was studying the effect of light and weather and, you know, how that, um, how that changes, you know, the way that we see that subject. And so, yeah, so I think if there's a subject that you're kind of zeroing in on, go for it, you know, go all in, go deep and really explore it. And so that's how I'm feeling kind of about cherry blossoms right now. I was super inspired and I found a couple more photos that I want to paint from. So let's do that. So let me just show you what the photo is real quick. <laughs> I kind of wanted to choose another close up one. I think I really was drawn to this photo because focusing on that one flower, I mean, just look at how many petals there are. Wow. Like, I know this is probably a different type of blossom. It might not be a cherry blossom per se. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but just those layers and layers of petals. I felt like I wanted to really practice capturing the highlights and the shadows of this um of this flower so yeah that's our inspiration photo so here we are again hello I'm over here and we're on day six i started a new page you know every day before this session i kind of go through each of the days to you know just admire each day for what it is and then yeah here we are day six Okay, so I did bring a couple extra things with me today because after yesterday's session where we painted the background, I wanted to paint the background again for this, but I wanted to tape off the borders. So I have a bunch of washi tape. Ah, oh, so exciting. But the bad side is, and maybe you guys can explain to me, but some of my washi tape, it doesn't, you know, like sometimes it tears off like right here on the sides and it's super annoying. So hopefully that won't happen now, but it might. So I'm just going to tape off the borders real quick. Because I do want to paint the borders. And if you don't know the map, oh, you know what? That's not even. It's okay. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> um, if you don't know the magic of washi tape, it's basically um, like re, like low tack decorative tape. That's kind of how I like to describe it. It's not just decorative tape, it's also low tack. And what that means is that, you know, it you can apply it and then easily pick it up and remove it or reuse it. And I think that's really important when you use it on watercolor paper because you don't want it to strip off pieces of the paper. I'm like super focused right now. <laughs> okay. It's not a perfect border taping, but that's okay. Just gonna roll with it. Using tape is also another great way to mask. And masking just means that we're preserving the, you know, the white of, of the paper. Let me also clip it because it's going to go all over the place. Oh, you know what? I should I should do this border too. All right. OK, 
Okay, here we go. I also brought a white jelly pen, like a jelly roll pen. It's brand new and I wanted to bring this just in case I needed to add any highlights. So we'll see if I need this. But for now, I'm just gonna use my trusty round sizes six and one. I might use a slightly larger brush. I might use my flat brush just to um, wet the paper. All right, let me just get my workspace all set up for you. Here we go. Okay. So to continue to kind of tie in mindfulness aspects, um, when working from a reference photo, just remind yourself that it's not about copying what you see, right? unless you are a true botanical artist and can paint this exactly, that is not our goal here, right? We're just trying to capture the form, capture the light and shadows to our best ability, and really just have fun through the process and really enjoy it. So just even now, maybe take a quick deep breath and remind yourself that it's not about the outcome, okay? And um, and, and then even as you're doing that in the same breath, maybe kind of plan a little bit, you know, like look at where the darker colors are, maybe where blocks of colors are. Like I see a lot of green. Um, oh, you know what? Let me bring up the reference photo again. So I see a lot of green, you know, like in the background and then towards the bottom, the background is more of an earthy color. Um, obviously there's pinks, a variety of pinks for the flowers. So just kind of taking that whole photo in, right? Because once we wet the paper and we, you know, wet it and start going, it's going to be um, a pretty quick process trying to get the paint on the paper. So here we go. Thank you everyone for joining. I really appreciate it. Whether you're joining me live or watching the replay, um, it really means a lot and you know it's really keeping me going so thank you so much and even if you you know didn't watch live just yeah if you can drop a comment and tell me your favorite part of the session you know that just that just really motivates me so and I think um, yeah if you do paint along with me yeah please tag me on social media um, tag my handle Audrey Ra Design um, and then use the hashtag paint with Audrey, or you can use the hashtag that I'm using 100 days of watercolor mindfulness to, yeah, so we can see each other's work. Okay. I'm just checking to see how wet the paper is just by tilting it towards the light and such. Okay. So I'm going to use my size six brushes to apply the paints. And again, let go of any expectation. Okay. Just let the paints kind of do their thing. <sighs> Maybe take a few deep breaths as you're doing this.
so sorry that was kind of out of frame. <laughs> Sometimes I get kind of lost in the actual painting and then forget to look at where I'm actually painting. Sorry about that. You know, I was thinking about painting the cherry blossoms in the corner, but I think I'm just going to just finish with the wet on wet in that corner. I think I just want to focus on the main set of cherry blossom, like right there in the center. All right. <laughs> that's another cool thing you can do I know some people kind of find find it intimidating but you can actually you know tilt your paper you know to kind of move the paint around and that's a really good way to kind of like loosen up too if you're really scared about um, you know paint going in unexpected places just let it go <laughs> I'm going to pause real quick and then use my hair dryer just to speed up this process. I'm going to mute my mic. So one moment. I don't know if you saw, but some of the paint got splattered onto the board. Totally cool. No worries. Okay, let's go in there with some of the details. And again, if you're just joining me, um, this session is not about, you know, trying to make it look exactly like our reference photo. We really want to just kind of capture um, the essence and really just focus on the um, the like main shapes that you see and the whole point of these sessions is to be mindful as we're doing it so it's totally okay if you're not doing exactly what you see on the paper uh, in the photo I mean totally okay Take some deep breaths along the way. Take a moment just to, this is gonna sound cliche and cheesy, but you know, breathe in the photo and remind yourself again that it's not about perfection. I 
I mean, if it makes you feel any better, you know, I started this session without my mic even on. <laughs> so if I was going for perfection, I should have stopped right then and there, right? <laughs> hmm. Okay, so now how do we capture all these beautiful, beautiful petals? Well, I'm going to imagine this is my center, so... I'm going to bring in some of that purple that I'm really in love with. I'll be really honest, I don't really know what I'm doing right now and I think that's like really okay to admit online like I don't um I don't call myself you know like a super professional artist like I didn't go to art school I freely admit that you know I um I know I love teaching and I do know that I know enough to teach but I don't call myself a professional artist. Like I know my limits, but at the same time, like I think what people do like about my channel and about my workshops and stuff is that they feel like they don't have to be perfect, you know? And that's really what I preach. Like I, you really don't have to be perfect because I grew up as a perfectionist and we talk about this all the time. You know, we, um, we feel like we have to be perfect, but you really don't. And especially in art, you really don't. And so, um, yeah, so I'm just going to freely admit that I don't know what I'm doing. I'm uh, What I am doing is basing my, you know, strokes and my artwork based on what I have learned and what I do know about watercolor. But because I'm exploring a new kind of style, so if you're just joining me, I'm trying to I'm trying out a new style where I'm not just painting like flat pieces next to each other so the way that I used to paint roses and you know flowers and whatnot was just kind of like one dimensional so I'm trying out a new style where you place different kinds of colors next to each other um, and then as you take a step back your eyes do the blending to, for you and so that's called broken color technique that a lot of the impressionists used um, and so I'm starting out with like you know blobs of color but then I'm gonna go back in there and then add contrasting colors I'm gonna add you know extra layers to kind of help um, make the shapes come to life and so I'm just being like very very transparent about that because if you're coming onto my channel for the first time you might be like well what is this girl doing <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at um, so there you go that's what I'm doing <laughs> Hmm. 
add a little bit more of like color in the background just to make it a little bit more interesting. I feel like it's kind of missing that pinkish haze. I mean, yeah, I love how this is turning out. <laughs> I'm gonna add just a little bit more smaller cherry blossoms just in the background. Let's see. And just for funsies, I'm going to add a little bit of blue. I've been kind of experimenting with adding blue and purple to my paintings. And I think that might be just what I need in some of these areas. And again, this is kind of like where that broken color kind of comes in. And I'm just going to add very small bits. Yeah, I feel like that just kind of helped deepen some of these colors. Hmm. I'm really liking this painting the background scene and then painting something that's in focus. Yeah, I'm really liking it. I'm kind of looking at my painting on the on the screen and then also looking at my painting here. It's hmm. Remember to take some deep breaths every now and then. <laughs> I think having this white jelly pen will be really nice. So I think I'm going to use this to paint the stamens on. Let me just make sure that it's like working. So Oh yeah, see this is what I was afraid of. <laughs> I was afraid that it wouldn't be working. Oh man. Like I feel like all it's doing is just like scratching my scratching my paper. Yeah, it's like not coming out at all. Have you guys have ha, had issues with this jelly roll pen? Like I do see some, but it's like, it's a lot finer than I was expecting, I guess. Hmm. Well, you know, if anything, maybe just adding, um, you know, I think I do have an acrylic pen. Let me see. Yeah, shake it a lot. So let me see if I can, this is probably gonna be really bad, but I'm gonna try to transfer some of this paint from here onto here. <laughs> Experimenting, ta-da. Yeah, I feel like all it's doing is just, I feel like it's not doing much, okay. Well, maybe I'll just use my pen, but I or my acrylic pen, but I think I need to dry my painting a little bit more. So let me do that real quick.
All right, let's see if this pen will work. The paint is flowing. What I don't want, and I feel like it's gonna happen, is like sometimes when I use these acrylic pens, like a blob of paint just like whoosh, just comes out. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen, Ugh, but we'll see. Okay, look at my look at my reference photo real quick. Oh man, this pen is like not even working. It's like barely coming out. Okay. <sighs> well, you know, sometimes we go through these frustrations and that's okay. I do have other opaque whites, but they're just in a different location. And I, to be honest, I don't have the energy right now to go get it. So I'm just going to um just going to switch gears and instead of using white i'm actually going to use a combination of um maybe i can use my pen instead let's see here's a black pen it's a black liner pen from molotow or molotow so i'm going to use black and then use yellow for the end so i'm going to take a little bit of creative liberty in terms of the color and that's okay let me take my black. Okay, let's look at my photo once again. Take a deep breath. All right. That might have been too many, but whatever. <laughs> At this point, I feel like everything is just out the window and <laughs> I'm trying to roll with it. It's okay. So I am gonna try to add a little bit of yellow ochre in my paints because yellow ochre in general tends to be, you know, less transparent. Um, so that might be true for your brand of paints. So that might sit nicely right on top of the black and on top of your paints. Obviously just don't water it down too much. I don't know if you guys can see that. Hmm. All right, just kind of taking a look at my painting again. Hmm. I think the only, you know, mm, like, I think the only critical, and I put that in quotes because it I want it to be a constructive criticism. I think the only constructive criticism I would have for myself on this painting is that I really want to improve in um, like capturing the flowers, petals, and shapes better. You know, I think like when there's so many layers like this, like I wanted to practice it today, you know, but I think I was, obviously I was a little bit intimidated and I think it's to totally normal to be intimidated. Um, but I think I could have done maybe a better job of, you know, um, of delineating some of the petals here on the page. So I think that's something that I'm just going to kind of just practice on my own. I think it was good to still kind of, you know, do it here and try something new. And it's just a opportunity for me to learn and to grow. So that's the positive way you can think about, you know, a criticism like that. So if you ever find yourself 
um, yeah, feeling like, uh, this doesn't look right. Like it sucks. You know, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, try to like, it's okay. Acknowledge that you're feeling this way and that you do, you know, have areas of improvement, but then try to get into problem solving mode. You know, how can you improve then? What can you work on? What is that skill that you need to develop? And so for me, it's really, um, really studying the light and shadows, I think in this photo and, um, and capturing them, you know, through paint. So I'll be honest, I do want to try mixed media. So I think if I had, you know, busted out my colored pencils or my other opaque whites, um, I could have brought back in some of those uh, highlights that I had covered up earlier, right? So yeah, I, I really appreciate that I can be kind of honest and open on this platform and I do appreciate the warm reception um, to how I'm you know approaching these videos so thank you so much because I think um, as an artist I want to show you all the good all the bad and all the ugly and all the stuff in between because I think that's really important to kind of um, like debunk the myth that that like we've that like we just got it you know I do think that there are prodigies out there who just know art you know without going to school and they just they just have that artistic bone I totally believe that but at the same time I still believe that all of us can learn and um and with practice we can improve and so um yeah I just want to encourage you to kind of have that mindset um as we as we do these sessions Okay, so here comes the best part. Everything's dry, so the paint peel. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh, yes. Awesome. Uh, this one kind of peeled a little bit of the paper. Aw, boo. That's okay. This is just a sketchbook, so it's not that terrible. But yeah, look at that crisp border. Like, mm, love that. Love that. <laughs> oh my gosh okay I don't know what it is but maybe having that having that paper or the washi tape off the paper and looking at it now with the crisp white border it just I don't know like elevated the painting <laughs> and now I'm smiling and I can't stop smiling I really like it Oh man. Yeah, so this is how I hope you all feel when you see your paintings, you know, whether you don't think it's good or whether you, um, you know, like don't feel really good about it. I, I hope you can find something that you are excited about, you know, maybe it was the joy of watching the paint spread or for me it was like I'm getting chills right now talking about it maybe it was the peeling of the tape and you know seeing this beautiful border come to life and then really bringing that extra light into your painting for me it was that and now I don't feel so bad that I didn't paint all the petals you know what you know what I mean like I'm <laughs> Yeah, you should feel ridiculously happy about what you paint. And um, and even when there is bad art, that's okay. You know, we can try again tomorrow. Um, yeah. Oh, man. Wow. So, so happy. Okay. Well. Oops, I forgot to put this away again. <laughs> well, thank you again so much for joining me. I... Yeah, I just can't say that enough, you know, whether there's a couple of you or whether there's a lot of you, I really appreciate each and every one of you. 
and I will be alive or alive. <laughs> yes, I am alive. I will be live again tomorrow, Wednesday, April 5th at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time again. And that'll be the last time for this week. And then I'll be live again, I think the following Tuesday. So not on Monday, but the following Tuesday. So yeah, just thank you again. Um, let me hold it up in this view so you can kind of see it from far away. Yay! I think, again, having that blurry background and then the cherry blossoms in focus is chef's kiss. I love it. I love it. I think, oh, tape. <laughs> I think I definitely want to explore this style a little bit more. So if you're obsessed with cherry blossoms like I am right now, Follow me again so that we can paint another one on this page tomorrow. <sighs> Thank you. Have a good night and I'll see you next time.